So we've got a working game, at least somewhat. We still need our enemies because we can shoot a laser, but we don't have anything to shoot it at. So we're going to want to be able to add enemies. And uh, in order to do that, after we handle our controls, we're going to call a function called add enemy. And we haven't defined that yet, so we need to still define that. But here we can just define a function called add enemy. What this is going to do is it's going to randomly insert a new enemy into our screen. So uh, this is actually a pretty interesting uh, and important concept because we need to have some idea of randomness. We want to be able to get a random number. So when we create our enemy, we probably want to say, you know, if get random, you know, say if we pick a number between 0 and 50 equals 0. So that would give us a new enemy about mm, once every two seconds. Uh, which is a pretty good starting point. So we need to define this get random function, function get random. And we'll say that's the max size. And what we want to return is we want an integer. So we'll say math.random times max size. And what this will give us, math.random is built into JavaScript, and this hint gives us a number between 0 and 1. That's totally random. It could be 0 0.1, it could be 0. 5694321 uh, but this times max size will give us some number now between 0 and max size not including max size so if we call get random 50 this is going to give us a number 0 1 2 3 all the way up to 49 uh, so we have about a 1 in 50 chance of hitting 0 so if we you know apply the uh, the timing there about every 2 seconds we'll get a new enemy and this allows us to kind of give some randomness some unpredictability to our game so once we have our enemy, or once we have uh, the, the fact that we're going to add an enemy here, uh, we're going to need to do things like create the element, create the sprite, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and create an enemy sprite. We need to give it a, a name, so you know, we can just say var element name is equal to enemy. And you know we can just use that get random function again, get a very large random number, so we can be sure that we never run into a collision on that name. So we want to have uh, that name be pretty unique. And with 10 million, it's pretty unlikely that we're ever going to have two enemies in the screen that have the same item, same name. We're going to give this an x value. Uh, we probably want that to be random too. So we'll say get random between 0 and, I don't know, 450 or so. We'll give it a y value. We want this to appear off the screen. So we'll say negative 40. And then we'll say this is going to be 35 pixels high and 35 pixels wide. So now we can define this enemy. And this will define the sprite, but it won't actually show the enemy on the screen. So in order to do that, we need to create an element. So we need to use var element is equal to document.createElement. And that will just allow us to create a new element on the screen. We'll make that a div tag. We'll say element.id is equal to enemy.element because element is going to have this value here, element name. We could also use just the element name variable here. Either way, and element.class name. We want to have this styled a particular way, so we'll set our class name equal to enemy. Now we need to actually add this to our document. Creating it doesn't actually add it to our document, so we'll use document.children0 because we want to add it to our actual the HTML page, which the children0 will give us the HTML page. And we want to append child element. So that will add this right to our screen. But we need to keep track of our enemies. So we should probably have some type of uh, array that will allow us to do that. So I'm going to create an enemies array. Go ahead and put it right here. And the enemies array will just be a list of items, a list of uh, enemies that we have on the screen. So once all of this is done, I'll say enemies enemies.length is equal to enemy. All right, so now we have a new enemy in play. And if we do nothing else, we actually won't see much here because the enemy is never going to move. It's never going to show up on the screen. Uh, so we need to actually change a couple of things here. We need to first add our class. Notice that I'm using dot here instead of a pound sign because the pound sign signifies that I'm referring to one of these by ID, but we're having a lot of different enemies here with a lot of different IDs, so we don't want to create a different CSS selector for each one. We're going to use a class here, which is the dot, so that when I say down here, when I call element.class name, it's going to refer to this. And for our enemy, we'll make our enemy, uh, we'll make them blue here. So 
So 0, 0, 0, 0, FF is going to be a blue color. We'll make them 35 pixels wide and 35 pixels high. And we'll also set their position to absolute. So that will put them on the screen, but we want to also make them move around. So updating their position is pretty important. So let's go ahead and in our update positions, we'll now look at all of our enemies. So we have that element, enemies array for var i equals zero, i is less than enemies dot length, which will take us through the entire array. This is just a pretty normal for uh, loop that we'll use to iterate over an entire array. It's basically saying from i equals zero all the way up to enemies dot length, incrementing by one. We'll go ahead and change some things for our enemy. So our enemy now is, we'll say it's uh, enemies i dot y. We'll have him move down a little bit. We'll, we'll have him move to the left and right a little bit too. So if we did enemies dot x plus equals say 5, then they would always move to the right, which wouldn't be terribly interesting. That wouldn't be terribly useful. So we want to actually add some random here. So we'll say plus equals get random and we'll say 7. And what that means is that the enemy is going to move between 0 and 7, but if we take 3 away from that, we're going to end up with negative 3 all the way up to positive 3. So that's going to allow our enemy to kind of shift its position a little bit. So now that we've updated the enemy's positions, we actually want to show the sprites here. So remember, if we look back at our game loop, we're updating the positions of all of the objects we don't control. We're handling the controls for the enemies for the uh, sprites that we do. And then down here, we're actually moving or setting the sprites on the screen to the right position. So here, I will go ahead and update my enemies. So now if I refresh my page, I should see enemies drifting down the screen. They're just the big blue blocks. And you know, I'm not really complete yet because I can just crash right into them and I can shoot at them and you can see that they're actually coming out of the bottom of my screen. They're going to keep going and going and going and going, which is probably not great. So we want to make sure that our enemies are interacting with this, the game. We also want to make sure that our enemies aren't moving too far off the screen. So in our next lesson, we'll get into that. We'll look at checking collisions, and we'll look at uh, making sure that our enemies don't move too far. Another thing that isn't obvious is our enemies can move off the side of the screen, so we want to make sure that they don't do that as well. Um, so a very easy way to do that would be to call ensure bounds here for enemies. Now if we refresh the screen, we've got a problem because our enemies are actually not going to move into the bottom of the screen. They're going to stop at the bottom, but you see they kind of just show up at the top. They don't actually move smoothly into the top of the screen, so that's probably pretty bad. Um, so let's take a look at those two problems in the next lesson, but uh, thanks for watching this one. The next lesson should be up soon.